Hey guys, it's Dave from ComputingForever.com standing in for Mr. Warren Bowman here on the BW1 channel. It's a great privilege to be able to talk to you today and I'm going to talk about Windows 10. It's been on the market for a couple of weeks now and it's doing very well in the reviews. Overall, feedback has been very positive. I actually ran a poll on ComputingForever.com in which I surveyed my subscribers and again, it was overwhelmingly positive. We had 139 people take part in the poll and 53.24% of people said that they loved the operating system. 32.37% said it was at least a nice improvement over Windows 8. Only 9.35% thought it was just okay and 5.04% said that they thought it was awful. So Windows 10 offers many exciting and compelling features. Uh, you may know a lot of them. Obviously now it supports Xbox gaming and things like that and the return of the start menu which has been uh, something that people have pined for for a long time is not popular in Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 to not have the start menu. Now it's back and it's better than ever before because it incorporates the modern UI in a really tangible way and of course Windows 10 integrates far better across all platforms, across all different types of devices, your smartphone, tablet, a convertible notebook all the way up to you know your notebooks and your desktop machines as well so and of course works very well in the form of an all-in-one with a uh, you know a touch display it also includes a new web browser so it's replaced Internet Explorer with Edge and it also allows you to draw directly onto the web page annotate it and share that with people which is really nice to see you've got improved multitasking with four-way app snapping which also includes virtual desktops you can have multiple virtual desktops but are there any more interesting and perhaps less well-known reasons to upgrade to Windows 10? Well, here's five more. At number five, I've written down here faster boot up times. So fast startups are a major feature of Windows operating systems ever since Windows 8 and 8.1. And now Windows PCs boot up faster than Macs. And now with the new DirectX 12 update, which is aimed at gamers, you can expect further speed and performance gains. Number four, Cortana. Being able to speak directly to your computer is very useful for, you know, hands-free interaction. And of course, Cortana is going to be everywhere soon. She's going to be available for Android and iOS. But she also works well within Windows 10 for other services that she provides. So note keeping, personal interests, organization, transport, and other pertinent information all contained within the Cortana notebook. Number three, universal apps. Windows 10 with its App Store now allows you to have access to applications that are designed for all manner of different devices. So smartphone and tablet apps now run in the desktop environment and vice versa. So it'll just be scaled accordingly, increased and decreased in size, depending on the, the size of the display that you're using on what type of device, which is wonderful. Number two, the new Action Center. Not a huge amount to say on this one. This is largely similar to what is in OS 10. Yes, I'm talking about Windows 10 with OS 10 and with a Mac behind me, of course, but you know, you can be a lover of all of it. Doesn't really matter. I'm not a Windows or Mac fanboy. I think it's all the same, really. This new feature incorporates uh, some of those features that you've seen in OS 10. So it's basically up to the minute notifications, information about, you know, news, things that you're subscribed to, you know, social media stuff like Twitter or whatever, all that kind of stuff will be, will be jumping up at you. Uh, you've got reminders, emails, and you know, calendar scheduling information as well, which is really great to see. And finally, enhanced security. There are major new security features like Device Guard, Microsoft Passport, and Windows Hello. And any code that runs from the OS upon startup must be signed by Microsoft or the device maker, the manufacturer of the machine that you're using. Uh, so Windows 10 ensures that that procedure cannot be bypassed, which is wonderful to see. Also, just as a kind of a, a, a bonus reason, I've mentioned that obviously Xbox gaming is, is a huge incentive for people now. There's also Xbox DVR, which is a wonderful app that allows you to record your big achievements. You know, if you score the uh, an amazing winning goal in FIFA or whatever the hell it is, whatever game it is, these things can be recorded up till you know, 30 seconds to a minute or whatever, and then shared with your friends. And I just think more and more, <laughs> Apple just don't have an answer to a lot of the things that Windows 10 has brought to the plate and in many ways they've fallen behind because even now with Windows 10 you can have your cake and eat it. It's going to be very easy for developers to recode applications from iOS and Android into the Windows Store and apps were one of the the biggest weaknesses that the, the fact that there wasn't a, a huge amount of apps available for the Windows Store, well now there is going to be potentially, 
which is massive. And Microsoft have decided to do this a one-size-fits-all solution, have one operating system to rule them all. And before with Windows 8, it wasn't quite there. But now with Windows 10, I think they've cracked it. Whereas Apple continue to have a completely different interpretation. iOS is a touch-based OS and it's very simple. It's not great for productivity. It's more of a content consumption entertainment OS. OS 10 it doesn't incorporate touch at all. And I think that if Apple don't find a way to reconcile those two completely different worlds, they could soon find themselves standing still up against Microsoft Windows 10. But those are just my thoughts. It'd be interesting to see. I might see if I can get Windows 10 installed on this. I've had a chance to play around with it on other people's machines and, and tablets and everything that I've had a loan of, and I've been very impressed by it. So it might be something that I'll eventually decide to do a boot camp, uh, partition on this, and install Windows 10. But I'm really curious about your thoughts. Would you agree with the poll from computingforever.com? What do you think so far of Windows 10? Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure we'll meet again sometime. And of course, you can subscribe to my channel, Computing Forever, by following the link that Warren will leave below. Great privilege to be able to talk to you here on the BW1 channel. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Warren's channel because he has some fantastic content. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.